uh, many of us have been doing um, MASH research for more than a decade. We're investigators in the study. Uh, so we, we, we conducted it every day. We knew about the drug and, uh, we were also co-authors in the new England journal and we learned a lot about the data. So why was that important to Abigail? The reason why, because March, 2024, we had the first approval for liver directed therapy for significant advanced fibrosis mash patients. And that was rosmeterol. And the guineas also. We did not know what would the FDA will require, liver biopsy or no liver biopsy. And to our pleasant surprise, the FDA was um, did not emphasize on the liver biopsy and opened the door for NIT. And it's not the job of the FDA to say how to start it, monitor or so. So we felt as people have been doing this research and the trials for some time that we need to get together and get consensus on what should be used. Uh, we relied a lot of on the Maestro Nash database line as well as the monitoring data that although it's not there are more analysis coming, we relied on those that uh, appeared in the literature as well as presented. And we relied on other evidence-based medicines such as nimble data, for instance, that was published in, the, in Nature Medicine. So there was a big gap. Clinicians were calling us like, how do I start treatment? How do I monitor? And we felt that we have to fill that gap really quickly. There's a lot of details in it, but a snapshot, just not, don't rely on snapshot. There's a lot of uh, details on that, but there's actually a summary graph that is uh, the visual abstract. So I will summarize it. So we um, divide the patients into two, that patient you should treat and the patients that they should not treat. And to summarize these, that you should not treat are basically those that the cirrhotics, especially the cirrhotics with polar hypertension. And it's not because the drug is not allowed on them in, or anything like that. There is a risk or anything like that. Indeed, we have ongoing trial in cirrhotic patients. So we need to finish that trial to get that drug hopefully approved to this patient population. But here we have the stopping, where, which is like transient elastography of stiffness more than 20 or a moral elastography more than 5 or ALF more than 11.3. And of course, evidence of polar hypertension, that's kind of like the big picture in this people and in this population to stop population. But the treatment population, if I want to summarize it quickly, it's basically what you need to do is one, confirm the diagnosis of NAV or Levmazol, steatosis and ultrasound or transient elastography. Two, make sure they don't have other former, uh, uh, another uh, liver disease, such as autoimmune hepatitis or alcohol and excessive alcohol intake and you rule out other causes. Three, the most important step for our clinicians is how do I spot these significant advanced fibrosis? In the biopsy language, those are the F2 and F3s. Of course, you don't need a biopsy. If you have a biopsy after three years, we said, go for it, but also obtain a non-invasive test at the baseline so you can monitor. If you don't have a liver biopsy, you can do non-invasive tests. The most, most well, well known one is transient elastography. In the book, we're saying 10 to 20, you can treat this patient population. And we emphasize in the group between 15 and 20 that you want to make sure they don't have cirrhosis, especially if they have plated less than 140 or evidence of polar hypertension on imaging study. We also use the ALF between 9.8 and uh, 9.2 all the way to 10.4. Um, and with caution beyond that, MR elastography between 3.2-ish, 3-ish to 5, uh, with no evidence of polar hypertension. And we use other important scores that were published in the guidelines, such as MASSIF and MAFIC. And the devil in the details in the paper, but there are really nice figures in that paper that summarize uh, these findings. And um, we hope that will be helpful to GIs to start uh, this therapy. Uh, we need probably more data on response to therapy. So what here, what we, the way we simplified it based on the little bit data we have, uh, that the transient elastography responded either by the cap or by the stiffness. So we asked, we asked for stiffness for more than 30%. We also ask um, and or ALT drop by 20% or less than 17. 
and or you can use MRI PDF have dropped by 30%. We emphasize on the fact that ALT and, AS, ALT and transient elastography, you have to be careful with this population because in the trial, there were patients that they had improvement in histology and they did not have such improvement on transient elastography and ALT. So you have to use maybe combination and maybe even go back to the MRI PDFF if you have it and see if that 30% because it was the most predictive, uh, predicted biomarker for response to therapy. So that's kind of the gist of it. And that's the, the data what uh, that we need. And I can tell you that those are probably some of them I'm, I'm gonna come in the ASLD analysis still ongoing. So hopefully you will uh, explore these data further. I mean, I think we go into that uh, the drug is safe. There is no issues. It has been used with thyroxine medications. I get this question often about GLP-1s and not. You, you can use it with a GLP-1. Uh, can you use it? Can you use GLP-1 instead of resmitarum? It's the only FDA-approved medication as of today for significant advanced fibrosis when NASH is resmitarum. So um, I don't think they are alternative. The GLP-1s and the duals, some of them still don't have a fibrosis improvement and this and that, and their phase three data is ongoing. They're very promising, but they are not alternative at this point. On the other hand, you can manage comorbidities uh, for obesity and type two diabetes with these medications. So it's not more replacing the other rather harmony uh, while we're focusing on this first FDA uh, oral drug approved for um, NASH with significant advanced fibrosis.